Self-publishing is easily the most passive income source I've found. In the past 32 months, I've published 10 books, sold almost 14,000 copies, and made over $37,000 for my self-publishing. But the average self-published book makes only $500, not a month, not a year, but for the entire lifetime of the book. It's not because these aren't good books, it's because self-publishing authors make 10 common mistakes. I'll reveal these 10 biggest mistakes in self-publishing as well as how you can make more money next on My Work From Home Money. Hey, Joseph Hoag here with another video from My Work From Home Money, your source for work from home strategies, freelancing, side hustling, anything you need to make extra money. Today I wanna to talk to you about one of my favorite work from home strategies, it's easily the most passive income strategy I've found, and that's self-publishing books. Now, of the 10 books I've self-published, I've made over $21,000 just in the last 12 months. And I was always just an average student in English and in school, nothing special. If I can do this, anyone can. But there are over 4 million books available on Amazon Kindle and most of them don't sell very well. We're talking less than $500 for the lifetime of the book. Some of these mistakes are super easy to correct. Others, it'll take a little practice, but all of them will help you sell more books. I'm excited to get into those 10 common mistakes, so let's get to it. The first mistake in self-publishing, and this is one of the biggest, is not using a blog strategically with your self-publishing. Even creating a simple blog is gonna drive your book sales and keep you on schedule for your self-publishing. So here's an easy strategy to use, combining a blog along with your self-publishing. Brainstorm out the topics and ideas you want in your book. That means the chapters and what you wanna talk about in each chapter. Then each week, publish a chapter or two on your blog. Now that's not only gonna keep you on track, keep you on schedule to self-publish, but you're also gonna be able to use that as a marketing channel once your book is published. Now, what I mean there is your blog is ranking for Google keywords around your book's topic. So when your book's published, you go back through each of those posts and you link your book Amazon book page into those posts. Give a little call out for, hey, this is just one chapter in the book, check out the whole book. I use this strategy and sell dozens of copies every month directly from my websites to my Amazon page. Not only means more money, but it also helps keep your books ranked within Amazon to get more of those organic sales. The second biggest mistake in self-publishing is not making a plan and a schedule to finish your book. So if there's 4 million books published on Amazon, I bet there's 12 million books that were started and never finished. Using the blogging strategy where you post chapters on your blog is gonna help keep you on track and on that schedule, but there's more that you have to do when planning your book. Outline each chapter idea you have as much as possible. This is really, really gonna help you in the writing process. Look at other authors' books on Amazon. What are they missing? What are they talking about? What can you add that isn't in these other books? Read through the reviews on similar books to see what readers wanted, what they got, and what they didn't get. So creating this very detailed outline is gonna make it super easy to write once you start. You're also gonna to wanna to find one place where you can write, a quiet place, distraction free. Schedule at least a few hours each week to write, even if you're trying to juggle a nine to five and family. Number three here is probably one of the most common mistakes I see new authors make, and that's trying to edit the book yourself. Now I understand it can be hard to go to friends and family and ask them to read through your whole book and, and give you feedback, but a well-edited book, grammar free and one that flows means the difference between selling a few copies a month and hundreds of copies a month. You can have some great information in your book, but if there's just too many grammar and spelling errors to keep people's attention, they're not gonna hold on to your book. The reviews are gonna be horrible and you won't make any sales. So editing is so important, but you can't do it yourself. You're just too close to the material. Reading through the book the third or the fourth time, you're gonna skip over things and you're not gonna catch those mistakes. Now there's two types of editing you need. The first one is called a developmental editing. And that's where somebody reads your book for the information. Make sure it flows and make sure they understand what you're trying to say. Now this is very important. 
So for this, you can have anybody that's unfamiliar with the topic read it because if they can't understand what you're trying to say, then the average reader can't either. Next is the copy editor. Now this is the traditional editor that we think of that's looking for grammar and spelling problems. Even the best English student needs a, a copy editor, so don't overlook this process. Now there's a few online tools you can use for the editing. There's Autocrit and the Hemingway app. Uh, there's also Grammarly that you can use, and these are gonna catch 90% of, of the errors, but you'll still need that human touch. You'll still need to find human eyeballs, so, so don't pass up this editing process. Okay, number four here on the worst self-published mistakes is getting a bad cover. Now this one sucks. It's not enough that you write an excellent book with tons of great information, but if it's got a crappy cover, people just aren't gonna look at it, okay? People do judge a book by its cover. Now, if you're not creative or a whiz kid with graphics, look around sites like Fiverr or Upwork to find freelancers that'll produce a good quality cover for cheap. Now, I would recommend going to Fiverr first. That's a freelancer website where people post jobs they'll do for as little as $5. Now, it's not always the best quality work you'll, you'll get, but what this allows you to do is hire three or four cover artists for five bucks each, get a couple of ideas, and find out which ones work best for you. After that, you can use one person, maybe pay them a little bit more for a, a more professional cover. Get at least three cover designs and then share them on Facebook, asking your friends and family which ones they like best. This is a great way to get buy-in from your community for your book, get that excitement for the launch, plus pick a great cover. The fifth big mistake in self-publishing is writing a weak Amazon book description. Now Amazon lets you use up to about 600 words for your book description. And I'm amazed at how many people don't use this. Understand that Amazon is a search engine like Google. It, can't, it doesn't look inside your book and see exactly what it's about. It needs that description and your other tags to know what that book is about. So the more you can write within that description, the better your book will rank and for the more keywords it'll rank. Not only that, but people read the book descriptions before they buy the book. So if you want to sell more books with self-publishing, take the time and write out your, your description. Make it as persuasive as you can. Fit in keywords in there. Learn how to use HTML tags to put your keywords in section headings within the description. Number six here, not directly asking friends and family for help on your book launch. Now your friends and family want to help you out, but they're not gonna do it with, without you asking. More than that though, they're not gonna do it without you directly asking them. I see a lot of people post on Facebook, hey, I've got a book coming out, who wants to review it? And they wonder why they just get cr crickets chirping. People need to be asked directly, and sometimes multiple times before they're gonna put forth that effort. So when you're looking for editors, when you're looking for reviews for your book launch, reach out to people through email, through personal direct messaging, or just through a phone call. The seventh big self-publishing mistake is not getting 10, at least 10 reviews in your book launch. Now Amazon says that the number of reviews you have doesn't directly affect your ranking, but it does, direct, it does indirectly affect it. What do people do before they buy a book? They look at the reviews, even if they just look at the stars and the number of reviews. And getting to that 10, that double digit review, number of reviews is important. It provides that social proof. Now I've seen it over my 10 books and many other books that I've researched. If you have less than 10, 10 reviews, people not, aren't quite sure about your book. Having over that double digit hump is gonna give you the social proof you need. So I'd recommend lining up at least 15 reviews from friends and family and people in your network. That way, even if only 10 come through during those first th few days of your launch, you've got enough reviews that uh, you know, those organic search traffic people coming to your book page are gonna see that and are gonna have more confidence to buy your book. We're wrapping it up here. Number eight on our list of most common self-publishing mistakes is pricing too low. So don't price your book for under $3.99 on Kindle. If you price it under $2.99, you're only gonna get 30% of the sales. So is 89 cents a copy really even worth it? 
price it too high though and it won't be competitive against a lot of the other books. You're going to want to start your book's price at 99 cents during your launch. This is going to put you immediately on the paid ranking scale. That way you don't lose your ranking when you switch over like I see a lot of, a lot of authors do when they launch for free. After a couple of weeks though, after the book launch, you're going to want to start raising your price up, $2.99, $3.99, wherever you want to take it. Now I found between $3.99 and $5.99 seems to be the sweet spot for Kindle. That's where you get the most amount, the most copies sold, but also a higher price. Now when you're pricing on paperback, I like to price the paperback high enough so that my commission works out to be about the same as what I'm making on Kindle. Number nine is not creating other formats of your book. We're talking paperback and audio. Now creating a paperback book is nearly automatic from, and can be done from your Kindle version. I'm always surprised how many paperback sales I make every month, even though the paperback version costs about twice as much as Kindle. Don't neglect audio either. For a nonfiction book, you can read your own book and Amazon owns Audible, so it's all gonna be on one page within your Amazon book page. Audible offers a $50 bonus when anyone new to the site buys your book first. So I make about a third of my self-publishing revenues from Audible, just from that source. Finally, one of the biggest self-publishing mistakes I see authors make is quitting after one book flops. Now I've got lots of tips and tricks for self-publishing on the blog MyWorkFromHomeMoney.com. Everything from picking categories, picking topics, and how to write your book fast. But some books just aren't going to sell well. I've got 10 books self-published and make over $2,000 a month, but that ranges from just $100 per book each month up to around $400 or $500 for some books. If you publish one book and it doesn't go well, publish a couple more. They're going to average out and you're going to make good money. You've got it in you, you've just got to let the numbers average out. There it is, your 10 biggest mistakes self-publishing authors make. Now I've got a lot more self-publishing videos coming so be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're here every Monday with a video plus every Wednesday with a Q&A video. So go to myworkfromhomemoney.com ask and I'll answer your question on a future video. Until next time, thanks for watching.